continue okay so question nine yeah question nine so hold on let's see okay all right question nine okay so question nine as shown in figure four um okay uh, can, can you see my my screen can you see my screen Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, following. Good. So, as shown in figure 4, uh, a 1.34 kilogram ball is uh, connected by means of two massless strings uh, to a vertical rotating rod. The strings are tied to the rod and are stretched. The tension in the upper string is uh, 35 Newton. Uh, 35 Newton. Sketch a free ball diagram. Uh, so, so uh, uh, this is the free ball diagram. Lah. Okay. So the ball just a dot, yeah, just a dot, a point mass, and then uh, what's the forces? Uh, we have tension one, tension one in the upper string, and then tension two in the lower string, and then the weight of the ball, yeah, downward, okay, and then acceleration is to the left. Acceleration is to the left because the center of circle is over here. See that? That's a circle he makes. Uh, can you imagine how this thing rotate? How this thing circulate? You can you imagine. Uh, so so the the center of circle is uh over here. So at the left hand side. So the centripetal. If the ball is at this position, the center is at the left hand side. Then the centripetal acceleration is to the left. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So and another thing is uh we need to know at the angle also. Why we need to know the angle? Because later on, we need to resolve the forces into components. Uh, we want to resolve the forces into components. You need angles, right? You need angles. And then one thing he shows here is uh, all the side. This is like a triangle. You see that? A triangle. And he mentioned that this string. Uh, he mentioned about the length of the string. Do you give uh, the length? Ah, you see that? Yeah. The string length. You see here? The string length is 1.7 meter. Uh, string length is 1.7 meter. So, this 1.7, this one also 1.7. And, and this side also 1.7. So, this is an equilateral triangle, right? Equilateral triangle, right? Yeah, very difficult for you uh, because you need to open your mind and then close your mind again to in uh, just to speak to me. Uh, uh, where my mind is open all the time. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for response. Uh, <coughs> I appreciate it. So, and then, so this is one equilateral triangle. And then, uh, that's why they have the same angle, 60, 60, 60, isn't it? 180 divided by 3. So it's 60 degree, 60 degree, 60 degree. Correct? Okay, so uh, we have 60 degree over here. And this, uh, you know, this uh, center line is uh, cut the angle into half. So it becomes 30, 30. Okay? 30, 30, 30. And then, okay, right now, do you understand everything? Yeah, yeah good. So now we have done with our free body diagram. Remember, your free body diagram must have, <coughs> excuse me, must include the centripetal acceleration. Okay, but just uh, draw the centripetal acceleration at the side, at the side of the point mass. Don't draw on the point mass. Okay, and then he give us the tension in the upper string is thirty five newton. So I put T one as thirty five newton. T two I don't know. T two is a uh, question B. Yeah, he asked tension in the lower string. That means T two. We need to find T two. Okay, and then uh, I look at my sign convention, positive negative sign. For y component is uh, fy equal to zero uh, because no acceleration. So no acceleration, I take going up as positive, going down as negative. Yeah, going up positive, going down negative. But uh, for x component is fx equal to mac. Uh, yeah, because uh, actually, I just want to write something here. In fact, this one is... This uh, resultant force in X component is Fc. Uh, yeah? this, uh, this resultant force in X component is Fc. Because got acceleration, centripetal acceleration to be specific. Uh, so, Mac equal to Fc. 
Okay, so got AC. So S component got acceleration. Got acceleration. And then, so if got acceleration, we follow acceleration. Uh, follow acceleration. So like direction to the left is positive. Normally is to the left is negative. Correct or not? Normally to the left is negative. But now we don't see to the left to the right. We see follow acceleration positive. Opposite acceleration negative. Understand? Understood? Understand. Understood. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, follow acceleration positive, opposite negative. Okay. So, I got the positive negative sign ready. Now, I can build my equation. Uh, look at the y component first. The y component. So, uh, going up, you only have T1 positive. Negative, you have... Okay. I need to resolve this force, right? Resolve the force. But I can't draw many things in the free body diagram. It looks messy. So, uh, I just need you to imagine. Uh, imagine so uh, the y component uh, the y component for t1 is t1 sine 30 yeah t1 sine 30 and it is positive because going up okay and then how about t2 t2 is going down t2 is going down uh, so it's negative uh, negative so this t2 sine 30 also t2 sine 30 negative correct and then how about the weight weight also going down negative uh, negative so we got this equation uh, equal to 0 okay and then we substitute all the value t1 is 35 newton and then uh, the weight uh, um, mg this is mg so mass of ball uh, put inside 1.34 uh, 9.81 and then we can get t2 and uh, that's our question b we got the tension 2 in the lower string understand understood yeah, good. Very good. And then, how about the C? How about question C? Yeah, want to find the net force experienced by the ball. So, where do you think is this net force? In which component? In X or Y component? This net force in which component? This net force? Huh? Sorry? X component. X component. That's right. Because Y component net force is zero, ma. Y component net force is zero. So the net force is only in X component because the acceleration acceleration is only in X component. So if got acceleration means got net force. Uh, the acceleration is in the X component. Acceleration is in the X component. So X component got net force. Uh, X component got net force. Yeah. And the net force is actually centripetal force. The net force the resultant force is actually centripetal force. Okay? Uh, so we need to first need to find the resultant force. Uh, how to find? Uh, we don't don't look at MAC first. Yeah, we don't look at MAC. We just look purely at resultant force in X component. Okay? Resultant force in X component. So we look at uh, like this. Uh, follow acceleration is positive. Opposite acceleration negative. So we have uh, T1 cosine 30 and T2 cos 30 also. Yeah, We have T1 cos 30. We have T2 cos 30. Both of these uh, forces, both of these components is positive. Uh, both of them are positive because they follow acceleration. Uh, both of them are positive. You see that? Because they follow acceleration. Okay. Uh, and then <coughs> we substitute all the value. Uh, you know, 35 Newton. T2 just now we got 8.71. We put inside. And then we got the resultant force in S component is 37.85. Uh, this is also the centripetal force. The resultant force is actually centripetal force. The resultant force is actually centripetal force. Uh, to fx equal to fc actually understand understood uh okay good huh so you understand yeah uh so um that's that's the thing lah. okay that's the resultant force now now i want to find the speed right i want to find the speed so um uh, now we want to find the speed so we need to find we need to look into the ac already yeah we need to look at the center look into ac because ac we have v square over r we have the v we have the v yeah we have the v 
So uh, centripetal acceleration, centripetal acceleration, we have the V. And then centripetal force just now is equal to the resultant force, which is 37.85, right? 37.85. And then mass is 1.34, yeah, 1.34 of the ball. And radius, uh, how to find radius? Uh, just like before, lah, kan? just like the example before, how to find radius? How to find radius? Using trigonometry, right or not? Uh, this question also also the same. How to find radius? Uh, so we have, uh, you know, the 1.70, okay? Uh, and then uh, 30 degree, how to find R? How to find R? R is actually S component of 1.7, isn't it? The S component, right or not? Uh, yeah, R is actually X component of the hypotenuse. Uh, or you want to put, uh, uh, okay la. Cosine 30 equal to R over L, correct or not? Cosine 30 is R over L, right? Uh, this is L, this is L, you understand? Cosine, cosine 30 is R over L, right? Uh, so, R is equal to uh, R is equal to L cos 30. Correct or not? Direct ke atas R equal to L cos 30. Okay? Yang mana yang lain lah? Pelajar yang lain lah. Semua kembali tidur kah? <laughs> ha? Macam macam sunyi je kelas ini. Atau memang begitu kah? Atau tak faham atau apa? Ya, saya tak faham. Ya, ha, kembali saya jadi tak faham. Ya, so L cos 30. So itulah dia. Ah, we got the R. Ah. We got the R. Ah. We got the R. So R. Uh, R is like that. Ya, yeah? we got the R. So we can get a V already. We can calculate the V. Alright, understand? Uh, I think ah. Uh, uh, this uh, okay. Uh, you understand uh, this one? This question? Any any question? Okay. Understand? Uh? okay. Let's uh. Let's...